wanted to use this 15 minutes just to kind of give a quick overview of some of the thoughts that we have at Stackhawk about uh, modern dynamic application security testing and why we started the company and quickly run through some slides that are screenshots of the product. Uh, we've only got 15 minutes, so I want to jump into it. First of all, uh, I'm Scott Gerlach, as you may have seen or heard many, many times today, apparently. Uh, I'm a CSO and co-founder at Stackhawk. Uh, I was a CISO at SendGrid for about three years, uh, senior security architect at GoDaddy. I worked at GoDaddy for about nine years, uh, husband, dad, brewer, horrible golfer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's some contact information if you want to get a hold of me later, uh, my Twitter handle and my LinkedIn. A little bit about Stackhawk. Uh, Stackhawk was founded for, uh, by two members, uh, formerly of VictorOps, so really plugged into that to that uh, DevOps transformations that's been going on, uh, and then myself from SendGrid, um, and kind of why we wanted to start this company quickly. I've, I've run AppSec at multiple organizations, uh, different facets from uh, being the person that's in charge of AppSec to being the person that's in charge of uh, the people that are doing AppSec, uh, all the way down to running tools myself. Um, it's always it's always a tricky, tricky gamut to run because of the difficulties of understanding an application and making the application security tool work and uh, using Zap or using Burp or using any of the commercial vendor stuff, um, Rapid7, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we always wanted to avoid that language dependency thing that happens with static code analysis. And it, it's getting better. Um, SendGrid was very much a Go-centric shop. So, you know, there at the time, there wasn't a lot of static code analysis for Go. So we searched and searched and searched for dynamic uh dynamic analysis tools to be able to test the running app. Because we knew if we could find anything with a running test, uh, testing the running app, then for certain those were things that we should be fixing. Some of the times in those static code analysis tools, um, you get some stuff that's that's telling you about a problem, but it's not actually exposed, or it's hard to tell if it's exposed in the product. Um, all of these things have been super hard to learn, as I mentioned, even for people's people whose job it is to learn how to run those tools. So if you're not using a burp or a zap on the daily basis, like you're in there four to six hours a day, understand how it works backwards and forwards all day, every day, it's super hard to figure out, super hard to get started. It's super hard to know what you're supposed to do next. There's a lot of people that get paid good money to do that on the pen testing side and on the app sec side. Um, but none of this is even a thing if you haven't paid the security tax. And by security tax, we mean you haven't invested in a security department per se. You may have a tool here or a tool here um, that's giving you some information, but it's kind of a little bit disjointed and it's hard to understand what to fix and, and how to go about it. Um, that's sort of the security tax. So what we decided to do was try to move the starting line. We, we wanna move where companies can start and how often, how early they can start um, and give developers the tools and information and power to find and fix those security bugs before they get into production. So we want to give that to them on the local desktop, in the CICD pipeline, in staging, and then obviously in production if they want to. Um, but lower that security poverty line where you can get into some kind of an AppSec program for a reasonable amount of money and, and spread the load across the development environment, the people that already know how the applications work uh, to, try to try to make that a more successful thing within the company. Real quickly, the AppSec problem. Um, AppSec, as we've been talking uh, over and over throughout this conference, really good in theory. Uh, those static code analysis tools are good. They're, they're sometimes noisy and they often lack application context, what's it actually doing with the, the pieces of code that it's analyzing. Um, language dependent, again, making sure that the language that you're using is supported by these tools is often uh, can get you into trouble sometimes. Um, and don't even get me started on IDE support where people are like, does it have a plugin for Eclipse? Because we've totally standardized on Eclipse throughout the entire organization. Maybe one or two places ever haven't done that. 
Uh, dynamic code analysis, it's better at actual app context. Uh, still can be somewhat noisy, but super hard to use. Really hard to figure out how to get it to go uh, in most of the implementations today. And then you've got your RASP, I asked WAF tools that are sort of instrument inside the code or protect the code. Um, and they, they really work best when they're in production or in a really, really strong test suite. So if you don't test uh, routes and paths and inputs and outputs, then those things can't find them. So sort of you're saying, I'm gonna push this into production. If someone finds something nasty out there, this should help me protect against it. Now, I think all three of these things are really, really strong, uh, whole holistic AppSec program. Where you choose to start, I hope dynamic analysis, but that's just me. Um, I would probably go dynamic, static, and then RASP, BIAS, WAF um, in the order of investment that I would work, uh, work on personally. Uh, AppSec is super hard to scale. So uh, even if you have an AppSec program and you have a person that is um, really good at testing AppSec and has built really great developer relationships and when they find a thing to fix and they give the developer, the engineering team a ticket and that gets received really well, it's super hard to find one more of those persons. Uh, it's super hard to get that into the, the hands of a large organization. It can kind of scale when you're sort of small, but you know, once you get past about 20, 25 engineers, it gets really, really tough to be involved in all those conversations, test all the software changes that are being made um, and get that information back to those engineers in the feedback loop that makes sense, that's not super delayed. Um, there's also no real try and buy for a bunch of these products. They're all kind of hidden behind that security paywall of contact us for a demo and um, ultimately it ends up spending a lot of money. So that's that's kind of setting up what we wanted to try to tackle as problem solving for customers at Stackhawk. Um, I wanna run through really quickly some screenshots of, of kind of how the product works. Um, and hopefully you get a sense of how we're trying to cater to developers so that developers can take on this uh, load of configuring applications and then having them scanned all the time when they're going through CI CD or they're developing new features. So the very first thing we have, <coughs> excuse me, the very first thing we have is Stackhawk is configured via a YAML file that lives in the code base with the application. So however your code base is organized, uh, we, we enable you to create this configuration file that tells us uh, some basic information about the app, where to find it while it's running, uh, how to log into it, if it's got authentication, what paths to not scan, uh, some other, a handful of other information. That, could, that file should live with the application code so that it's easily repeatable by anyone in the engineering department. CICD can take that information, instrument it, and run scans as you're doing pull requests or merge requests or commits to master or however you do your flow. You can also run it as you're developing uh, in local host mode, because this file is sitting there, it's part of the CICD, just invoking a simple Docker command will kick off uh, a scan using this, this information and start scanning the app. Which looks very much like this. Uh, simple Docker command, really uh, streamlined output that is just, hey, how many URLs did I find? Because that's a really good indication of, am I finding the entire app? Am I getting myself logged in? Those kinds of things. And then a really good summary of some of the findings that come out of this. In this particular one, you can see we've got a cross-site scripting thing here uh, on one of the paths for my test application. Uh, and then at the bottom of the screen output, it will actually dump you, give you a direct link into the Stackhawk portal uh, that will get you into the scans pages. What that sort of looks like is this. Um, this is just a list of running scans over time. You can see I, I've been scanning a lot of my vulnerable Django app over and over and over in many different environments. Uh, I get a good summary of the paths that I found, any of the high, medium lows that I've, uh, I've newly found, all of my triage items, so things that I don't wanna do anything with or I have promoted to a ticket or are false positives. The scanner, the command line scanner, the Docker scanner, 
and this portal will continue to honor those things over time. We'll still find them as long as they exist. We'll still attach notes to them um, over time. And you can see over and over and over what's going on with these scans. Should they run into problems or break or any of that stuff? Clicking into, the, into one of those rows gets you into the details of this stuff. So in here you can see uh, we completed this scan this morning. It took 22 minutes to run. This was actually in GitLab. So part of what I've got set up for this test app is uh, doing some running in GitLab. We found that one high, uh, which is that cross-site scripting reflected, and then some cookie stuff, anti-CSRF tokens, X content type, and a 500 that is getting thrown in there that maybe we don't want to have. We can then from there click into what that one of those looks like, and we can click on the cross-site scripting reflected here. Um, gives you a really good overview of what the problem is on cross-site scripting, as well as um, where you can find the responses and the requests to be able to recreate these kinds of things. So you've got the response or the, the request field here, which highlights the string that triggered the alert. And then we've also got that uh, recreate button that gives you a good curl command to be able to recreate the, the attack or the test for lack of a better term, the, the test in local host mode. So you can kind of put the, uh, the code in debug mode and follow it through to see where that input or output is getting mishandled. Uh, again, there's you've got the notes here so that you can say, hey, I've, I've promoted this to a ticket. We're going to fix this. Here's our JIRA ticket. Uh, and then it'll continue to follow that, but it will stop breaking stuff. Or it will stop exiting non-zero, as, as it were. Uh, the other statuses you, you have right now are uh, assigned. So that's the ticket. We're working on a JIRA integration right now. So you can push ticket information. Uh, false positive and risk accepted. I think it's super interesting that risk accepted is in here as that's often left out and it kind of forces you to go, uh, I'm going to assign this to a ticket and put it into a backlog that I don't want to touch. Um, but it sort of looks like you're going to fix it uh, versus a false positive where the the test did not actually succeed, which is not what that actually is. So risk accepted is, is what companies should be doing on some things and being able to have the assignment there is really good. Uh, that was a super quick run through of the Stackhawk platform. If you wanna check this out some more, talk to us, uh, please come by our vendor booth uh, in, the, in the conference here, chat with me, chat with Joni, chat with Ryan. We'll be happy to run you through a demo, get you an account set up if you wanna test it. Um, there's a ton of really good useful links here. Created an account in our open beta. The, the platform is open for you to use right now and it's free. And all the people that are on the open beta get a sweetheart deal, just saying. Uh, really good videos, I think, cause I'm in them, uh, about getting started and how to configure the YAML file. Uh, good blog post about how to scan the damn vulnerable web app if you just wanna test something really quick. And then if you want to go look at my other thought leadership stuff uh, about why devs struggle with AppSec and how to make it easier, which is a much longer presentation than I had to be able to fit into 15 minutes, uh, you can check that out on YouTube. Um, it's from the, all the talks talk uh, about a month ago. I think that's all I've got for you. I got the three-minute warning. Sam, hopefully I'm on time still. Mm -hmm.